Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to the April 1st Conservation Commission meeting. Could we do a roll call, please? Joan McKibben, Chairman. Let's go this way. Harry Menzig, Roger St. Lawrence. Andrew Thompson, alternate. Stephen Weber, Selectman's Rep. Matt Lepore, member. John Curtin, alternate member. Diane Flinsky. Tom Levesque, Vice Chairman. Okay. Um, first on the agenda, we will have public input on non-agenda items or member input on non-agenda items. Madam Chairman, mm -hmm. I would like to apologize to any of the members that I might have offended in recent years. And for approximately 15 years, I have been, 50 years, I've been serving the town of Litchfield in various positions. I have now made a mistake that I admit to, but it has caused no harm whatsoever to anyone that I believe was involved. For this, I'm being forced to resign. I did say that I was willing to, but quickly rescinded my offer. However, the majority of the selectmen insist that I do so. I sincerely thank the two that voted in favor of continuing me on the board. It is with great sadness that I do now hear my submit resignation <clears throat> effective immediately. Thomas W. Levesque. Mr. Chairman, here's your resignation that you so much wanted. The board wanted it. Thank you so much. Mr. Chairman did. <clears throat> I'd like to thank Tom for his 20 plus years of uh, volunteer work to the Conservation Commission. He started as Board of Selectmen representative and continue on with us for 20 years. And thank you for your service. Thank you. I thank you, Tom. That. Thank you. Tom, your, your valuable information and history with this town are going to be really missed. Appreciate it. I think it's sad that the selectmen did this. Well, we can discuss it in non-public if you would like. So we have um, we have Michael Croto is not here yet. I don't know if he's coming. So we have two openings. I'll appoint Marion and Andrew as alternates for tonight, please. Uh, can you pass? No, oh, I don't need that yet. Okay. Next up is the um, joint meeting with the Conservation Commission and the Recreation Commission. We have always talked about meeting uh, with the Recreation Commission and thought it was a good time to do this. Um, I have the two things on here, Parker Park and Dara Pond. Uh, would you, could you rec um, introduce yourselves, Recreation Commission? Hi, yes, my name is Andy Collins. I'm the chair of the Rec Commission. I don't know who the I'm Andy Reynolds. I'm a uh, member of the Recreation Commission. Okay. I'm Chris Burns, also a member of the Recreation Commission. Okay. And Stephen Weber, I'm Mark Slapman's rep of Recreation. Okay. So as far as Parker Park is concerned, the Conservation Commission really has nothing to do with Parker Park. I just wanted to clear that up, and I believe it's always been a recreation uh, parcel. That the um, Work that was done down there a number of years ago, a couple of trees planted, three or four trees planted, and the bridges and the <coughs> railings were done by Timberland Corporation. I don't know if you knew that. Um, they had done a public service um, day down there and done all that work. Some of it obviously needs to be reworked. The other issue is um, Dara Pond. And I know the um, selectmen wanted an update back, I believe in 2019, uh, about what the cost would be to continue on with solitude lake management as far as um, working with the milfoil, which is native milfoil, which is puts an extra little twist in the in treating it. But it was treated in uh, July of 2014. We have a 2019 survey, which I don't know if you have, which I can always forward to you. And um, we need to decide what it's going to happen with Dara Pond because if we don't do anything, the milfoil is just going to, of course, keep going. What are your thoughts? Um, well, we we have discussed as a as a commission. Uh, we we, you know, in our end, we really need to look and see what we would like to see as a future use of Dara if we, if we want to try and get the beach area open again. Um, I mean, obviously, the milfoil. 
we don't want it to become a, a, a frog pond. Um, but you know, we, we're not sure exactly to what to which level. Um, are we just trying to control it, or are we trying to make it so that the the water is swimmable? Because uh, I'm sure that those are two different uh, levels of treatment. Did you have a copy of the 2019 survey? <coughs> I don't believe so. Okay. The, um, at that time, the herbicide application would have been $9,800. Um, that, that was, was one, that was like for one year. I don't know. It was a two or three year. That was for one year, right? And it would have to be maintained. I don't know every other year or. But do we want to have Solitude Lake Management come in and speak with the boards? You know, have a a, pu a public meeting with Selectman Recreation and Conservation. That would probably be smart. And, we you know, probably we have to do it via we WebEx. Put the budgets days. together for next year. Okay, maybe I can get a hold of them and see if, you know, they're down in um, Shrewsbury, Massachusetts, but since we're all doing WebEx and Zoom these days, I think it would be doable. Mm -hmm. You know, have some of us here and them on on um, WebEx. So do, do you want me to try and set that up? That would be great. Okay. See what I can do. Um, did anybody else have anything to say about Dara Pond on the commission? Yeah, I, I thought we actually um, brought this to a warrant article or something a couple of years ago, and it didn't get past the warrant article because of the, the cost factor. It was no, actually, it, actually, it actually never made it to warrant. No, I don't think um, it did. Right, it got kind of nipped because the selective wanted to hear our intentions with that on prior to submitting it to warrant. That's, that's right. Steve, yeah, Andy's correct that we pulled it because we didn't know what the long-term uh, fix was we knew what the cost was going to be for three years, but we didn't know what the future maintenance cost would be. And also, we weren't sure at that time what recreation wanted to do with the body of water. As Andy was speaking earlier, is it going to be swimmable or frog pond? So, until we got direction, we thought it was the best to pull the or an article for that year. All right, thank you for correcting me. I, I, I remember we, we discussed it, but I don't remember where we ended up with it. All right. So, I'll, I will uh, put a call into them and see. Um, if they could give us an overview, you know, they have all the, the uh, survey reports from 2016 and 19, and I'm sure they would be willing to give us a, you know, educated uh, summary of what we should do. Does that sound good? Sounds great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, anybody else have anything for the Recreation Commission? That's the only two items I had on the agenda, but if anybody has anything that we should go over. Um, how involved are you with the trails, um, the, the uh, new trails that are going in? Well, I know Andy Ruggles has uh, been involved a bit. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm on the, involved in the trail crew, um, but as far as a rec standpoint, the, the trails crew uh, just went to the rec commission for their um, support in in reaching out to the state. Uh, you know, back when they were trying to to look at what to do with Calvin's Loop, and uh, that kind of fell through. But as far as the new trail is concerned, um, nothing between rec and the trail commission went down. And the other trail item trail. is um, one other item is. Diane is working on a community garden idea, and I think that might even fall under more of a recreation thing than, than conservation, because from what I see from the slideshow, that it's not really on conservation property. What are you, is your feeling on community garden? And where Now, where would this be located? Well, I don't quite know yet. We haven't seen the um, report from Diane, but um, where have you, who have you talked to, Diane? Um, I've talked to Whitney um, and Steve Normanton, and I talked to Nancy, the president of Monadnock Land Trust. So um, that, that would be down at the at the base of uh, Pinecrest on 3A. Mm -hmm. So that's not town property. It's Monadnock Community Land Trust owns it. Um, so I don't know. My feeling Plus is Parker Park, though. Right. The town owns two two acres of Parker Park, and that would be adjacent to uh, Parker Park. 
No problem. We'll keep you posted on I mean, it. Yeah, I mean, certainly anything we can do to support, you know, that would be a recreational activity. Um, you know, you come, we can you come to our meeting and present what we'd like, you know, what you'd like to do and what you'd like from us. And I'm sure we would uh, definitely entertain uh, at least hearing it and, and figuring out what we can do. Okay. We'll let you know what happens. Okay. Do you have anything else for us? For any other questions or um, concerns? And concerns? I wasn't sure if Steve, um, if you had gotten it any, or if you had all the information you need, I know um, we've sort of been, uh, we're, we've decided to take over the fishing derby. I know that the Conservation Commission has done that for quite some time. So um, I didn't know if there was anything that Steve had for questions uh, on that. No, Joan presented and gave me a lot of information a couple of years ago. Um, I haven't pursued it too much this year because we don't know where things are going to fall with COVID. I, I'm doubting we'll be doing it in the spring, maybe something in the fall. If not, it'll be next spring. But um, at this point, I, I don't think we could even, I, I, I imagine we'd have to go in front of the emergency management team as well to determine if we could even have a function like that. Yeah, ne next spring probably would be good. You, you have to do it when the water's cold in fall. I don't think yeah. it would work down there at the Chase Brook. So, yeah, so we're probably looking at 2022, maybe the spring of 2022. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. It sounds good. Anybody else have anything else? Nope. Okay. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen, and hope to stay in contact with you. I'll let you know as soon as I hear anything from Solitude Lake Management and uh, see what we can work out. All right. Great. Thank you so much, Joan. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All righty. Continuing on with our agenda. Um, because of the length of the agenda, I am moving election of officers from the 16th position up <clears throat> to number two. Does anybody have an objection to that? Nope. Hearing none. Okay, so we have, um, does anybody need a copy of the bylaws? I can pass them on. I have one. Thank you. Are you feeling safe at all? I'm full of that. So what? <laughs> but not 10 days yet. Two weeks yet. Thanks, Pat. <laughs> Okay, so we have um, openings for chairman, vice chairman, and secretary. As you can see in the section under, <coughs> mem uh, under membership. It is. No. No. It's under terms of office. Terms of office. Okay. So we'll start with, why don't we start with... Um, Chairman, and what, how we'll do it is um, can make a motion. If there's more than one, then uh, we'll go on from there. Um, Madam Chairman, I move that we put you as uh, chairman. I uh, respectfully decline. I I make a motion that uh, Matt Lapore for chairman. I'll second that. Okay. Is there any other nominations on the floor? Seeing none. Um, all those in favor of Matt Lapore as chairman, please say aye. Or raise your hand, please. Go on. Aye. One, two. Uh, keep your hands up, please. One, two, three, four. I'll be abstaining. Five. 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 Oh, wait. I did appoint you. Yep. <laughs> Six. No, me. And seven. So oh. seven. Abs one abstention and so it'll be six 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 zero one, six zero one. one abstention. right abstention. Congratulations! <clears throat> Thank you very much. Can I take over from here? Uh, well, let me finish the election. <laughs> <laughs> um, next position is vice chairman. I make a motion for Michael Croto as vice chair. Okay. Um, 
how do we do that if he's not here? <laughs> he, he can't. He, he can't respectfully decline. Is there a second for Michael Crodo for vice chair? I'll second. Matt Lepore seconds. Would Would you entertain being vice chairman? I would. I'll second. I nominate her. Joan. Well, what? Uh, let's see. And I'll vice second chair. Joan. Okay, so we have two nominations on the floor. So it was Roger and Marion. For you. For, for you. Joan is vice chair. And Steve and Matt for. Steve and for Matt for Michael, Michael. Croto. Yeah, how do we do it? Uh, can I vote the first motion second? first? Yeah, it's two motions. So the first motion is for Michael Crodo as vice chair. All those in favor for Michael Crodo as vice chair, please say aye or raise your hand. Two, 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 four, five. Nobody abstained. Five against four, five. Do we have too many members voting? Six, no, seven. Five, two. Defeated. Okay. The second motion was um, Joan for ch vice chair. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Four, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, opposed? Five one one, one abstention, one nay, one nay. Okay, for uh, secretary, I make a motion to nominate Andy Thompson for secretary. I object. Okay. We don't have a motion. We don't have a second yet. You I can second. object by by voting. I second. Second. Okay. I object. What do you object to? Um, I object to the fact that he's not a member of the board yeah. and that as an officer, I believe that we have other board members that could serve in that position and should. He's an alternate member. I checked with NH, New Hampshire Association of Conservation Commissions. They said it's not a problem for an alternate to. Okay, so would, this, would he be handling the duties that are assigned on this as opposed to what you have been having done in the past? We could, we could do that, yes. <clears throat> I think the bylaws speak to what the secretary should be doing. Well, let's hear from Andy if he would like to do that. The secretary should be. Well, keep minutes of and take attendance of all meetings. Shall notify commission members of meeting dates, handle correspondence, and perform such other functions as may pertain to the office of secretary. He's been taking meetings. I've only been taking right meetings, along. right. Right. Shall notify commission members of meeting dates, which <clears throat> kind of which that handle correspondence. Chairman has been taken care of and handle the correspondence. So and that's been yeah. Do you have the opportunity to come in and um, get the correspondence out of the mailbox where I gave everybody the tour of? Mm. <laughs> and we don't get a lot of correspondence. <laughs> um. The meetings are usually determined when they're going to be. Well, they're always the first Thursday, unless right, right. Committee So it's really just the correspondence. Home. Right, it's just really the correspondence. Right. Sure. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. So you'd be posting the meetings on. No, it doesn't say posting the meetings. It says she'll notify commission members of the meeting dates. I mean. But handling correspondence, wouldn't that be also sending out the meeting agenda? No, I don't believe it's so. Correspondence, I, correspondence I would think, would be mailings that come in to the, you know, where all the mailboxes are in the back room. But more of a secretarial role than has been played in the past, as opposed to being done by the chairman, or in this case, coming up, the chair would be the vice chairman doing the secretarial job well, the, as well. The, the um, chairman would be setting the agenda because the chairman knows what's coming in and coming out as far as agenda. And if we don't get through this agenda, then it's going to be carried over to May, I would assume. So back to the motion that's on the floor. Who made the motion? You and Roger seconded? Roger. 
Okay. I'm going to call for a vote. All those in favor of so first of all, Andrew, are you okay? Yes. With that? Okay. And I abstain. Obviously. Okay. All those in favor of Andrew being the secretary, say aye or raise your hand, please. Aye. Aye. One, two. You're an alternate, John. Okay, sir. Mm -mm. I didn't know. Four. Four. Okay. Opposed? One. Okay, four to two. Did we ask if anybody else wanted to be secretary? Or no. I didn't ask for any other motions on the floor. Are you correct? Were there any other motions for secretary? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, would the uh, new chairman like to take over? Sure. All right. So, I believe next up would be uh, uh, what is now item number three interview with Jason Brennan regarding conservation alternate position. Mr. Brennan? Yep, coming in. Oh. <laughs> jumping so uh would you like to take an opportunity to introduce yourself to the board i know many of us know you very well but uh just in case anybody doesn't or any member of the public is interested in knowing a little bit about you would you care to introduce yourself sure uh my name is jason brennan 23 aldridge street and i think as uh, many of you know over the past several months actually a couple years i've been heavily involved with the conservation commission a little bit about myself. I've been in town for 20 years. Professionally, I am in the civil and environmental engineering industry, and I essentially provide technology solutions for cities, towns, utilities, and governmental agencies. And in fact, um, every town surrounding us is a client of mine or has been a client in the, in the recent past. Um, prior to working at the firm that I work now, I work for the city of Concord in the engineering department, so I've got a lot of expertise when it comes to municipal government, and that's pretty much all I've done since uh, I got out of college. Uh, prior, a little bit about me and my work in town, I was on the planning board for seven or eight years. I was vice chair of the planning board for many of those. Um, in regards to the conservation commission, I was involved with a lot of activities, including improving Moore's Falls, installing all that fence, helping uh, fix up the muster field across from the old town hall, supporting some of the grant programs that you're looking to go after, talking with the state about grant applications, things like that. So I've been pretty heavily involved with that. And I think what I can bring to the board is energy, um, the ability to build teams, to be able to get things done, knowledge especially in the engineering world and on the technology side and just uh, municipal government knowledge and i think i bring a lot of ideas for the future i personally think that the town is really nearing a crossroads and um, i think we've got a plan for the future and i think i can support that in doing things like developing a conservation strategy that integrates with our current master plan thinking about a, a proper land acquisition strategy based on the funding that you have and potential funding in the future. Uh, maybe putting together a process to help uh, look at conservation properties and make sure that they're maintained properly into the future. And then maybe thinking about ways that we can spark uh, community involvement. So I think I can bring a lot to this commission and um, you know, put that out there for you. Yeah. Quite a resume. If you have any questions, I'll take them. Yeah, sure. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Brennan? Ms. Diane. Um, Jason, you were on the planning board for seven years. Why did you leave? That's a good question. I was on the planning board from around 2004 to about 2011. As I got into 2010, 2011, my kids were in middle school and high school and were extremely heavily involved with sports and I was heavily involved with that as well. So I had a lot of conflicts with the meetings and a lot of stuff going on. And the bottom line is I couldn't put the effort into the planning board that I felt that I needed to put in. And the long story short is based on all the things going on with my kids and running around and stuff like that, I was essentially just showing up at the meetings. 
and I wasn't doing that extra homework. And I always said to myself, if I'm just going to, if I'm going to be on a board like this, I'm not going to be the type to just show up on a meeting on a Tuesday night and then give my input then. I'm going to be the type of board member that's going to be doing the extra homework. And I thought that by me just quote unquote showing up on Tuesday nights and not doing that extra work was a disservice to the board. I thought it was a disservice to the town. I thought it was a disservice to the alternates. And, um, and I didn't think I was bringing the value that I could bring. So I decided to step back, let some of the alternates go in, wait till I got my kids go through college and then get back into it. So that's the reason why. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? All right, I'll uh, entertain a motion that we uh, recommend Mr. Brennan uh, for appointment as an alternate on the Conservation Commission. I'll second it. Oh. No, he was looking, for, you were looking for a motion? I was looking for a motion, correct. I'll make a motion that we recommend Jason as Jason Brennan to an alternate posi position on the Conservation Commission. Okay, now and here it. Now you can second, it. second it. Okay. All those in favor? Seven, zero, zero. Um, all those opposed and abstain? All right, motion passes. So I believe next up you will uh, go before the selectman for yep. appointment, and then you go to the town clerk to be sworn in and will be an alternate on the Conservation Commission. All right, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Thanks, Jay. Okay. Uh, next up, ArcGIS mapping tool. Yeah, so I got an update on that. Um, I reached out to a, uh, a rep from the company, and he gave us a pricing breakdown. Um, so it's an updated from what I originally uh, presented. Um, so what it is, it's a license for a JS professional that would basically have control of that account. And then we can have other users where um, there are apps that you can collect field data for. Uh, there are web viewers that we can have, interactive web maps. Um, so there's several different costs to all that. And my thinking was to have one of the JS professional user types, then have one field worker type, which is uh, $35, the professional is $80, and then a viewer type, just to be able to view our internal um, products before we put it out to the public. So that's, you know, someone can review what I've created or someone else has created before we bring it out. Um, the field worker one is you can use apps on your phone or a tablet and go out and we can collect our, um, uh, say like, you know, our, net, our resources, our land resources reports that we have to do. We can create mobile apps for that and collect the data digitally. So that would be an advantage of having that uh, type of user account as well. So that, that was the, that was the field worker? Account? Field worker. Yep. Okay. And what was the $80 one again? Uh, GIS Professional. Uh, and it's, just, it's the full thing is GIS Professional Standard. There's three levels. Um, there's different tools that can be used per level. So um, to get the most bang for your buck, I think that middle tier one is the best. Bet. And then what do they charge? Do they charge for the viewer? Uh, $10. So we can get a couple of viewers if we wanted. But I think for at this point, we can get 10 and we can add on if we find that we need more users. Um, so how, do, how does this work? So if you set something up from your computer and then um, and then I understand how to collect the data part, but then mm -hmm. the viewer can view what you've set up. Right. Yeah, it's, a, it, it's like a private website, but then the viewer can see into that private website. But then we can also publish um, these maps and apps publicly as well. Okay. So, right, so then the, because pre previously we had said $100 and now it's 125 Yeah, it's 125 for what I'm proposing now. Mm -hmm. So do we need to make a motion to 
Yeah. Yes, I'd say so. <laughs> Jay has some input. Oh. Oh, Jay, this I'm, I'm, I'm waving my hands just because, um, sorry, uh, Mr. Chairman, could I provide some input to this due to the fact that my firm is an authorized reseller of the software that you're providing and I could provide a little bit of input on this? Yes, you may. Okay. Um, the, the one thing I, the question I have for Andrew, and I just want to make sure just so that the, the town is, um, it, ha it has no liability related to the software, is that when you ask the ESRI representative about the cost, did he say that was for personal use or for governmental use? Because I believe it falls into two buckets because the pricing that you're providing um, doesn't seem to be in line with what other municipalities pay. And I just want to make sure that the town doesn't come into some sort of licensing issue. Sure. So I provided him with our town report and our town audit report and told him what our budget was for the Conservation Commission. And he said he would be able to reduce, uh, do a reduced cost of your licenses for the Conservation Commission. Gotcha, cool, perfect. Just wanted to make sure you weren't trying to getting pricing for a personal use version of it nope. to use for municipality because that could have licensing, software licensing implications. Right, yeah, I, I definitely, he, yeah, I definitely indicated it as for the town conservation commission. Oh, that's cool. All right, um, Mr. Uh, Chairman, jump all over it because the creator licenses that he was talking about for seventy-five bucks are typically five hundred. Mm. Yep, I should have pointed that out. So it's it's, it's a good deal. deal. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like it. All right, so I'd like to make a motion to spend the one hundred and twenty-five dollars to. Uh, Get the ArcGIS mapping tool. I'll Make second motion if we uh, spend the. I just did. He, yeah, Joan just made a motion. I just made the motion. Oh, I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 One, two, Hold on. One, two, three, six, seven. There we go. <clears throat> Any opposed? Any abstained? Seven zero zero. All right. So, Andrew, um, if you submit a bill for that, we, you can get reimbursed. Okay, okay. we'll do. Okay. okay. Next up, Morris Falls. And we got a number of different items under Morris Falls. Okay, can I mention the Whippoorwill study? Yes. Okay, so there, I got an um, email from Natural Resource Conservation Service about uh, doing a Whippoorwill survey on the Morris Falls property. They were interested there because it had previously been cut for uh, New England cottontail. Um, even if they don't find Eastern Whippoorwill there, they have, they'll put out uh, little um, recorders and they will find out what else is there. So that was very good. And I did um, poll the members. I got four affirmative. So I told the uh, NRCS to go ahead and they will be doing that. Whipper will. Um, we also have the Spittlebug people that will be, I think, contacting us in the spring. So that's the Whipper will study. Sounds and very interesting. I think it was, um, they'll contact us within 24 hours advance before they put anything out. Okay. Will they send us a report? Uh, yeah, they, they will. And, and and I guess there's like 300 properties that they're studying. And uh, yeah, 350 private forest owners have agreed to participate in the study. And they will let us know at the end. It's very cool to participate in. Yes. Next up, <laughs> repair of historic signs at Morris Falls. We had, uh, you had said we had another vandal Vandal situation on the signs. Yeah, there's another sign has been ripped from the post. Um, judging by the way the post, the screws had kind of 
carved into a circle. It does look like somebody twisted the sign off, and I found it in the stream by that culvert there. Yeah. Um, it was. It's the first um, sign on a post down on. Uh, As you on get the to trail. the trolley track. Yeah. So we have that. We do have that sign now. And we also have another sign that had gone missing. I recovered that from the shoreline of the Merrimack River towards the southern end of our property. So, um, and I do have the um, verbiage from the Eagle Scout. He had sent me all the text, so we have that on in the computer. So, if anybody is handy with woodworking, um, I did talk to the police officer about that when, election day. I think I saw them, and um, they said the best thing to do is get the camera down there. Okay. I can do that. All right. So, so is anybody interested in repairing the historic? I did volunteer my husband, but I think he's getting a little bit busy. <laughs> Would anyone else be interested in being involved with that? You have to laminate them again and get them on the post. And Fortunately, it's just the one that we'll need to have that done because we have the other two. So we can just uh, oh, okay. figure out how to bolt those back onto yeah. the post. Okay. All right. So it shouldn't be welded onto the post. I'm not sure. No, they're wood. Yeah. Oh. Is yeah, it'll be it's like a wood board that the laminated information is on, and then that goes into a wooden post. But I'm not a welder, so I can't say. Um, and then I guess since we've already dis discussed trail cameras related to the signs, or did you want to discuss something else with the trail cameras? No, that that was it. All right. Uh, trees to be moved by National Grid. Okay. I had a call from National Grid. Um, the trees that were planted, I believe they're um, Japanese crab apple. I can't, I believe that's the term. Um, the ones at the north end, there's eight that have to be moved. The ones at the north end are actually almost right up against the power poles. Uh, and the ones at the near the fence at the parking lot are too close to the wires. Um, he explained the whole arcing situation and that that middle wire is an extremely high uh, direct current line. Good news is National Grid will move them. Okay. So we have to decide. Um, he suggested, I told him what was happening on each side of us. He suggested on the property lines then he would contact us before um, they do anything. Okay. Um, Sounds like a good idea. We, uh, before we continue, um, kind of just on the topic of Morse Falls, uh, we did have an incident there <laughs> this past weekend. It is an extremely bizarre incident. So I went, I went down to uh, Morse Falls last Saturday in order to clean up some trash. And uh, on the shoreline, and so I went in uh, through St. Francis towards the beach area down um, on the southern side of the property. And when I got down to the beachfront, I encountered a man in a state of complete undress. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I um, elected to uh, notify the police department um, to make contact with him and let him know that he needs to keep his clothes on while he's in the property. And they did. They responded quickly, and they had a conversation with him. <laughs> but okay, uh, in case anybody's interested, it's or needs a reminder that is a it is a public park <laughs> down there by the church. Um, but very bizarre situation. But just want to share that with everybody. Do we know where he's from? Is he homeless? Just somebody that? Uh, I didn't get any of those details. The I, I just know that the police department sent two officers to go speak with him. And while they did, I stayed at the trail intersection leading there to kind of redirect anybody over there away. <laughs> but, um, <Good> idea. <laughs> okay. Next up, stabile lot access from stage crossing and permitted conservation uses. Okay. Um, I'll uh, speak to that, to that for a moment. Um, I did finally locate the person's phone number, and I believe I sent it to Diane, but I said hold up on doing anything because um, does anybody need a copy of the quick claim easement? Maybe um, Steve needs one. Please. 
Do you want the dining? What is it? It's the fifth one. Oh, sure. Thanks. Anybody else? You want one? Really? You want the house? Actually, isn't this the same one, Joan? That you? Yeah, it's the same one. Did you? Yeah. So, in rereading this for like, uh, something jumped out that you know I've seen before, but um, in under purpose talks about the purpose of the access easement to grant the grantee, which is us, um, pedestrian and vehicular ingress and egress between Charles Bancroft and tax map 12, lot 25. Lot 25 is our lot. Um, then it goes on to say, the grantee agrees that its usage of the access easement shall be limited to conservation purposes only as permitted by the Town of Litchfield Conservation Commission. So really, we... Um, need to decide what that is. Um, what conservation purposes do we want to be there? Um, right now, as you know, the access is between two of the units, which is not a good situation. Between 22 and 24, we had talked about coming up. Uh, the first unit is four. Page 12, if you have your tax map. Yeah. And going in that way, but you can't. When you get to the power line, it gets very wet. So you can't. We had talked um, a number of years ago about making a loop in there. Um, before we did anything like that, I would want to look at the wildlife action plan maps. And I know there's, you know, you could tell just by the vegetation out there and the trees that it's, there's a deer yards out there. So. Um, do we really want to be that disruptive to, you know, we need to figure that out first. So before we, <coughs> we have the access now between 22 and 24, but everyone agrees, even we agree that it's not ideal because you're going right between two units and people get a little frazzled when they see us walking through there. That so what you them. had asked me to do was to talk to them about going in here um before number four before, right number four is what i have yeah so do we would you st still want to do that or do we want to iron out what the conservation purposes are what do we want to do i think if i can speak for a minute we had gone up and walked that area by unit four right and it was pretty wet no no unit four by when you go off the hill right, and then go in, there's a ridge line there, and it's, it's. were you with, Roger, were you with us that day? We walked that up in there. Somebody was. was. Yeah. yeah but there's a ridge there. line up in there. You can get over to the trail that way. Mm -hmm. And I, well, Matt, were you there that day? I, I was, I believe. And, it did, and we had thought it didn't take much brushing out to get in that way. No, it looked like it looked pretty doable. There was some reason not that. So if I call them, what would we use it for? What would we go well, in there that's for? The, that's yeah. the issue. What would we go in there for? Um, what do you see it being used as, Matt? Uh, let's see. I know there is a trail back in that property. It's not incredibly big. It kind of goes <laughs> towards the first property on the left there, roughly, I want to say. Or, or sorry, more towards the... Uh, common area there that little house that they have at the beginning that structure okay and then it kind of spans back towards the power line it's nothing too remarkable right it's not it's not a big area and then when you get to the power line it's you can't uh, you can't really go any further because it's wet you can yeah. go around it but then you're on the next parcel which not, is not ours mm -hmm. so it doesn't sound like we want to put additional trails back there then it doesn't really sound like we want to open it to the public yeah i'm thinking yeah. I think they'd be more upset if it was open to the public. I yeah. think the whole <clears throat> access should be kept as we have it, just to go through and inspect. Do inspections. The yeah. Yeah. And because the, it's, the reason that we bought that is between, it's between, they were planning on putting a road to go to the next parcel. That's why we bought lot 25. There's two vernal pools that it goes, the road would have gone right between. And that's really the reason that we bought it. Um, so 
It really is a habitat protection piece. Should we uh, explore those resources that the state had shown to us to look at uh, the potential impacts that involved yeah. of opening? Well, we should look at the, the heat thing that they did in the presentation. Yeah, they, they have a few tools there. The, the, the book that's a tools, right, and um, the wildlife action plan, we should look and see, you know, the type of forest and what they have out there for wildlife. There, there was a trail out there at one time. There is a trail, yeah. yeah. It's it was still probably, there. It was probably an old fire road back way back when. I mean, I don't think I've been there in 10 years or so. So I remember. Probably yeah, there's a, there's a nice trail out there that, yeah, you know. Very nice. It's pretty wide, too, so I would agree that that sounds reasonable that that was could be an old fire road it's or, or a snow or maybe it had been a snowmobile yeah, trail. It was, it was. where else is there access to get to that trail albuquerque. is this the only access uh yeah otherwise you come in from albuquerque and walk the whole length of it that one easier time, said than done <laughs> yeah at, at one time we had thought of of the property next to the um, uh, library we were going to carve out a little parking area and put it in there and, and bring a trail in through there. But we, we didn't realize how wet it was. Yeah, it's really, uh, it's really, but this time of year, it's really wet. We, we went, when we looked at the property with uh, representatives from stage crossing, it was like very, very wet. It was pond like. Um, so I, <laughs> I think we had kind of explored that option before as a potential new access point and it didn't seem feasible. <laughs> So if we want to just leave it as it is and leave that, <coughs> excuse me, that opening for an inspection. Yeah. I, well, I mean, this problem is, is can, you know, always continuous, right? <coughs> well. And it never seems to go away. But because only because we had thought to open it to the public, but really it's not the greatest place. I mean, you, you can't have the public going through there. I agree. But if it's just for inspection to see how the vernal pools are doing and make sure there's not a bunch of debris being left out there. Well, so we probably we still want to move it then. <coughs> what was that? We probably still want to move the easement then and so that we're <coughs> never going there in between those yeah. two and we can talk to them about moving this and not making it public. Or, or, um, <coughs> or talk to them about... Um, just going up by, excuse me, by unit four, the first unit to do inspections, because if we change the whole thing, they're going to have to um, do all the legal work to withdraw our, our access and give us new access. And mm -hmm. it's going to get a little, you know, see what they want to do. I did give you Mr. Uh, no, you gave me Roboto's. my number. It was not good. And then when I called you back, uh, to get another number, you said we were going to hold off. So I don't have a number okay. yet. Okay. It's Vinny Rabado is the, is the name. <clears throat> to, um, actually, I put it in my phone so I wouldn't lose it, but I'll give it to you. Okay. Okay. So maybe just unofficially move it there? Well, I don't <clears throat> think we can unofficially move it. It has to be. No, if... if go through. The, how do we want to leave this? If, if they want us yeah, to move it... Until the, he will be to then. Diane should call them and see if they want to officially move it. Should sure. we do that? Yeah. If they do, then yeah. it's got to be clear that they are paying all the legal expenses. And so there'll be legal expenses that would be. Oh, yeah. Because we will need a whole new easement to change easement. <clears throat> okay. That might be worth it to them, though, to get us out of their hair and keep um, us sure. <laughs> in between these. It might be worth it for them. Yeah. And I, I remember when we went and we had this discussion with them about moving it. I think the conversation was very amicable and. Um, I think it would be wise to reach out to them. And you take it and you distribute it among all the different houses there as far as a fee. It wouldn't be much for per homeowner mm -hmm. to get it done. All right. Yeah, if they so choose not them. to, they can always do a memorandum of understanding too. Oh, okay. We'd also wind up with a brand new... And then it's over. Yeah. Then it's over quick. Oh, then yeah. it's off our list. Oh, yeah, it's over. It's expensive to Right. <laughs> okay. On it. Okay, that's all I had on that. that. All right. <clears throat> Next up, community garden fact finding. Diane. Okay, Russ, are we ready? I have some help here from Russ. <laughs> um, I put together some slides to show you what we have. Um, when I left the meeting, 
I called Whitney um, on the 8th Carpenter. and told him about the interest in town um, in using some land to create a community garden. Um, and he was pretty excited about it. He said there was some pipe over there that we could use um, to, to irrigate the land um, that it had been done before. And he also informed me, and we all knew that the land trust, the Manadlock Land Trust, is changing hands, and they're having a new, um, a new trust coming into play, and that should be happening over the next month. Um, and that he was going to call me in about a month. Um, and then on March 19th, Whitney called me again. Um, he and Steve Normanton and Manadnock um, President Nancy Wallace wanted to meet me and to tour the land. So here is an overview slide um, of the field location right there. Um, you can see the blue brook running behind it. You can see Parker Park there. Um, and then coming right off 3A, there's the field. Here's the view from the street going south on 3A with this field. Is that where they used to keep the steer? Yeah, yeah they had some okay. bulls out there. They've yeah. also done some um, planting out there in the past. There's already a gate there, and there's already um, concrete, so we wouldn't have to deal um, coming right off at 3A, so we wouldn't have to. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Oh. I'm sorry you don't do I'm on, oh, I was on. Let's see that one. <laughs> you can see the you can see the fence there, um, and it is also all contained um, with fencing around there. Nothing that would keep deer out or um, other animals out. Um, that that fencing is actually could come out. Um, so we went and we met, and we um, it was really a very fun visit. Um, they toured the the property with us. Um, there's a conservation easement on all the land on Magnadnock um, and that area that's circled in orange. Um, is it an easement or a restriction? Um, it's an easement, which is um, which is at the end. I have a slide on that as well and show you that. Um, so they own about 20 acres over there. Steve Normanton is farm was farming some of it. For the most part, he's got livestock on there. He's got chickens, um, some pigs. And right now I think he's um, got his cows up uh, off of Dana Boucher's land further south. Um, so that easement allows us to use the land um, as a town for footpaths, agricultural, open space. Um, and there is an area there that it hooks up to Parker Park that we're talking to them about also about putting a bridge back there. Jason Brennan has been working on it with him for over a year now. Um, they kind of would like us to put this proposal together as one thing. Um, the field itself is about 1.6 acres. We've already got an entrance with a gate. Um, potential connection to Parker Park and access to irrigation is amazing. Um, and Whitney was phenomenal. So um, I don't know whether or not anybody else here has met him. He's on the um, Manadnock Trust. And he had some great ideas about putting together this garden so that you can see from the overview that there's a lot of grass there and sod and moss and things that would take a while to get this entire field ready to to be grown things in. So what he suggested and um, what I was talking to him about is that we would have different lots. The size of each lot would be given to a family for them to be allowed to grow um, whatever they decided they wanted to grow on it. But rather than just turning over the whole field, what Whitney suggested is that we decide what size those lots would be and then just, just do those lots and then leave the ground cover to avoid mud and dirt and dust during drought especially. So that would be mowed down tight. There's definitely tick haven back there. On the right-hand side, you see the shady area. Um, not a great place to grow, um, but Steve Normanton suggested we use that for parking. Comes right in off the entrance. Um, so it's really kind of... Um, 
So I have a question on um, they're certified organic farm. So they are certified. Is that, is that field organic also? It is organic. And what we would do is we would have to get together. Steve Normanton has um, volunteered, as has Whitney. Um, they're really into this idea of getting the community on that land, um, both as for footpaths and for this garden. Um, so they, even though the land trust is going to be changing hands, Steve Normanton and Whitney still really want to be involved in this. So they would do, and this is like the next thing coming up is um, when we did the proposal to the landowners, when, when that is accepted, that we would form community groups to discuss the op options and the issues, and they would teach us how to, to farm organically um, because it would want, we would want to keep that land organic. Um, we would develop a formal plan as far as the lots went, um, and then we would execute and, and decide how many lots we had and how many people we had that were really involved. The first couple of years are going to be a lot of labor intensive. And Whitney suggested that we had some lots that we use for things like potatoes and onions that were group done. Um, uh, another thing that we talked about is the easement. Another thing we talked about was involving different um, parts of the community. Um, tithing so that the people we weren't we aren't going to charge families to use those lots but we could ask them to tithe to the food pantry um, so that they would we would be providing through this land also some tomatoes and fresh vegetables and things like that for the food pantry which is traditionally canned goods and um, they do the best they can in that in that regard um, also um, school participation and Nancy Wallace um, I had said that I wanted to get the school in there. And she said, you know, it would be really interesting to have the kids, if they were doing a section on Litchfield history, to do a garden that was done plant, um, catching fish down at the brook, bringing the fish up and using them as part of um, the, um, what do you call it? Um, not manure, but fertilization. fertilization. Yes, thank you. Um, fertilization to have them see how the Indians actually did um, did grow things. So yeah, I'd like to get the school involved. I'd like to have a play area in there for children. Um, somebody mentioned that they had seen that done in another garden so that while the parents are working, kids could have an area that would be safe for them off road. Um, picnic tables so that it would, it would further generate um, that feeling of community of people working together and learning together. And How many and, uh, acres is this? It's 1.6 acres. So it's enough to do a few. We'd probably end up, there were 64 people replied that they were interested in, in doing um, a town town sponsored community garden. So we'd probably have to go to a lottery in that case, but it really does a lot for agriculture in the town. Um, I called McQuestion Farms to talk to them about um, how they felt about this and to talk to them about um, providing us the plants, we, starter plants we needed to, um, to make available to people so we could buy those from them, made available when it was time to plant peppers, time to plant tomatoes. And they were really excited about it. Um, I talked to Matt and Christy. They were really excited about it. Did you talk to anybody about uh, plowing the field at first or tilling? Or I actually have had people calling me, Ryan, um, Ryan Lane from um, Natacook um, called me. He's uh, been involved with the town as well for, um, the fields and everything yep. he maintains the fields for a wreck um and he said he has a plow um and then there's steve gannon talked to me about different people that had plows um i don't think we want to burden steve normanton anything with anything other than teaching us how to to farm organically i am not a big farmer i am you know i have my own gardens there they're decorative gardens they're flower gardens i would be learning um mm -hmm. along with everybody else in town um Oh, let's see, and organic farming skills, joint meetings with interested parties. So we really would want to see who came forward as leaders in that group of 64 people that knows a lot about gardening and that would be, so it, it really is a big project, but I I've, I feel like it belongs in conservation because it's agriculture, um, but it can be done wherever. Um, so what do you think? That's the easement. And I can get that to you, Joan, as well. Dug that up. I think it's a fabulous idea. I, I agree. 
Do you like it? I do, yes. Yes, yes. I think it's a great idea. Um, I have two uh, or one question rather now. Um, so for parking wise, if we do have people parking in there, we're gonna would anybody have to reach out to the state about that being no, a because area? we already have that cement easement over the the it's already been a road. It's already okay. been a driveway be a in the past. We're very lucky. All right. Okay. We're very, very lucky in that way. And we would probably put something that would be easy to till under um, as far as gravel or whatever on that right-hand side, which is that shadow area that Steve said we wouldn't be able to grow in anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we have any other questions? No, I, I believe uh, Joan also brought up uh, bringing rec into this. Uh, I think that might not be a bad idea. Maybe this can be a joint venture for I, us, and then we can yeah, kind of yeah. Because we walked, we walked this um, first, and then um, he wanted Jay there as well because Jay had been involved in the Parker Park section of it. So he wanted it a joint presentation, a joint proposal that that path came up to the gardens from there but that we also put another bridge in there that Jason, I believe, has found the money for that was already mm -hmm. huh? back in 1994. Mm -hmm. It's been sitting in an account to make a bridge or more down through Parker Park onto the Manhattan. That North was the Roman Bergeron Memorial Bridge, covered mm -hmm. bridge fund. <laughs> yeah, it's been sitting there quite a while. There's a lot of money in it now. But, um, yeah, so it would definitely be, it would definitely be a combined proposal sure sounds good so the town doesn't actually own that land no no so it doesn't necessarily have to be under the auspices of either conservation or rec committee i think they want us to oversee that there's not people trashing it they want um a local town board to be Involved. I promised them that as long as it was there, that I would stay involved in some some fashion. They really want to make sure that they've had other projects. There was one across the way that was um, that was farmed by immigrants. Um, that they were the workers that worked at Ness and Cake Organic Farm. Yeah, and it didn't go well. It didn't go well at all. It was very trashed, well. and it, they ended up having to close that project. So they really would like somebody in town to be watching it and on top of it. And I, I promised I would. Well, so, yeah, whether it be as a conservation member or as a rec member, whichever. But Whitney wants to stay involved. He's like really. He doesn't want to. Uh, doesn't want to leave it. He, uh, he's, he's like, I wish we had done this five years ago. I was like, well. <laughs> well, he's been there a long time with that farm. Yeah, he's a great guy. Oh, my God, he knows so much. He's very was very interesting to so, talk Matt, to. Matt, do you think it should be conservation or recreation? Um, I, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, but in lieu of the you, a town can create an agricultural commission, I believe, in New Hampshire. Right, they can. But if one doesn't exist... Is that not kind of in the purview of conservation? Mm. Typically, or is it I, more aligned with? Would that have been why we we had Charlie do that land that we bought as as agriculture, right? As I farming? think he was renting. Yeah, but we right. we put it into agriculture, right? I, I don't know which one you're talking about. Um, the parcel where the boat launch is? Is that where? You're, yeah, where the boat uh, launch is no. because we we're trying. So that was he he was farming that to begin with. Yeah, but it's agricultural on conservation, right? The thing is, it's conservation land that gets rented. It's right. We bought, we bought it. It was agricultural land, and then we bought it. The, the, part the, the, the thing is, this land isn't owned by the town. I mean, I think it's great that people will be able to, you know, plant things and garden in it. That that's great, but. I just don't see it as being something the Conservation Commission should be in, not in charge of. Directly involved with Joan, okay. when you did this last time, was it done under the... No, I did it myself. You just did it yourself? I think it would just be one more obligation for the Conservation Commission. Well, what what, what do, we, what do we, we actually have to do? Any, we would probably get together people to do it. 
my idea would be that we would get together people that would do it and then they would do it. You've, but you've already got a group of, you've got a bunch of interested people, right? Right. But I haven't gone ahead with anything other than to find out how many people are interested. So, I mean, what would the commission have to do beyond what you're doing? Do we have any other chores to do? In other words, I don't see that you would. If you put me in, in responsible for it, you wouldn't. I mean, I would be as a conservation person. Yeah, that sounds right. I wouldn't be signing anything. I wouldn't be, you know, I, I would, we would do a proposal that we would. Yeah. I mean, why wouldn't we want to put it under the direction of conservation and recreation together? Yeah. yeah. Conservation I mean, together. that's. Yeah, I, I agree. It would be it's relevant to both. Oh, uh, definitely for sure for conservation. At least now that I'm, as I think about it, the basis of a conservation commission is for the protection and the proper utilization right. of resources. And I do think it would be within our, with and then people then people are using it as a recreation because they're going out yeah. to garden. So I think it it falls definitely under both of them. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Sounds <clears throat> good. I have once again, it's another reason to bring both boards closer together. I agree. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. you when you can that way. I have, um, I have copies of the, of the proposal yeah, yeah, yeah. and, uh, yeah. so oh, do we need a motion that I continue? Do we, so, are you looking for a motion for continued support to work towards this garden? Yeah. Cause at this point, what I was on was a fact finding mission. Yeah. Um, I brought it up that the people were interested um, I didn't know if we were going to put it on conservation land or if we were going to put it anywhere. I just came and asked. Mm -hmm. And then that's how we ended up um, at Monadnock. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. So. They're, they're a gr good group, too. They've been nice to work with. And the community. It's beautiful with back there, too. Well, and the beautiful. fact that they want to connect to us. and yeah. it's, it's really kind of nice. Would, would the people that abut that property, I mean, besides us, I mean, people across the street or whatever, would they have to be notified of what was going on? No, because it's private property. They can pretty much do what they want on it, as long as it's in yeah, line with the easement. I have absolutely no problem supporting this. It's my personal opinion. Does anyone else have any input further on this? Can I get a motion? Can no. I was going to say, could we make it a uh, like Diane was saying between the conservation and the rec committee have representatives from each one? Like Diane already volunteered. Yeah. Steve Gannon has already walked the property for rec as well. Okay. So sounds like we have the groundwork kind of already in place. Mm -hmm. So. So do you, does she need a motion to continue on? I'll accept a motion if anybody wants to make one. If we, I'll make a motion that Diane carries on with her. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll fact second. Finding and, and I'll second it. Pursuing, um, yeah, pursuing put that. more people to planning stages. Planning, <clears throat> planning stages. Good. That's good. Any other discussion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Abstained? Right. Passes at zero, zero. 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 Mm -hmm. I mean, so all right, next up, the map good. poll results from the online newspaper. So uh, back in mid-February, I put in a poll on the Litchfield Mirror, which is our online newspaper run by the LCTV. And I was just, it was kind of an informal poll looking to see from an education or largely the poll was about educational programs and things that we might want to focus on thinking about us kind of branching out with more information for the public about uh, conservation and our properties. And so I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I put up seven different uh, options for uh, what people wanted to see more of. And they were guided walks, info on wildlife, historic site info, so uh, more information on the historical sites that are on our uh, properties, like the walk down at Moores Falls, uh, information about wetlands, and then I also threw in volunteer opportunities, um, new trail maps, and hiking recommendations. So that could be... What was the second one? I'm sorry. 
information on wildlife. Okay, thanks. And the final one was hiking recommendations. So that could be either in the form of here's a different, here's a trail or a location you could walk at in town, or maybe it's hiking advice. I have experience hiking long trips. I know Jack does as well. Um, and many of us like to be outside. So we all have, I'm sure here we have a wealth of information. Uh, and the votes were as followed. I had eight votes for guided walks, six votes for info on wildlife, 19 votes for historic site information, six votes on wetland information, four votes for volunteer opportunities, 12 votes for new trail maps, and 17 votes for hiking recommendations. So the, the big winner here was historic site info. I like was that. Joan's recommendation, I know. We can uh, have a lot of rich history in town, and uh, Morris Falls, off the top of my head, has a lot, a lot we could talk about. The historical society as well. I mean, yeah, like yeah. a huge active historical society. Yeah. So this was just for Mo Morris Falls, or just in general? In, in general, but uh, Morris Falls would be the, in my mind, that's the one of the bigger historical sites we have. Um, but it could also be about the history of each property that we've purchased and maybe a little information about it. Um, again, it was a very informal poll to see if we could uh, move in a... Probably the muster field would be a big interest. Yep. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. another good one. There's actually, at the muster field, is actually five or six different uh, occurrences that happen there, not occurrences, different history events. And the um, archaeological people from New Hampshire are very interested in that site. I'd be uh, happy to spearhead that. Um, if anybody else is interested in working on articles, um, I'll mention again that the Litchfield Mirror is interested in conservation articles for the newspaper, and that's all archived um, for future reference. So if anybody likes to write, you're more than welcome to, and we can uh, start submitting some more uh, information for the public to see. Uh, but uh, yeah, where would there be, in, besides a historical society, which has a, you know a lot of information on uh, the old buildings as Litchfield grew up, historic houses? Um, is that the only place that there would be access to that? Or does the library have a lot of historical information? Well, the library has some historical information. We have some in the building uh, regarding yeah, some of our some properties, I believe. HLN um, articles that Marjorie Pitcher used to write for the HLN, and, and uh, Rich Siles did too. So we have quite a few articles in the files. Good. We have the 1988 survey of the historic houses. Interesting. Log 3A. Thanks. <clears throat> Next up, natural resources inventory conservation plan work session. So I've been flooding your inboxes, I hope you've noticed. <laughs> the printer's going crazy. With um, uh, the conservation plan for Amherst, uh, um, Barbara Richter at the NHACC um, sent me that, um, Amherst, New Hampshire's finished plan that National Regional Planning Commission helped them with. Today she sent me, and I sent it to you today, chapter six of the um, handbook that they're, re they're re rewriting the conservation handbook, and this is chapter six, um, how to get started. I did hear from Jamin Cara, the um, executive director of National Regional Planning Commission on um, what it would run to Price-wise, if they helped us, that would be $4,500 to um, do a similar plan like Amherst has. They have all the mapping. I did check at the beginning a private firm, and it was about $8,000. So I said, that's not going to work. <laughs> um, but it's probably something that we need to have, uh, definitely need to have a separate meeting, sit down, take out the old plan, the regional environmental plan, uh, priority plan, take that out and, and start working on that. Okay. Can we get access to the old one, Joan? Um, 
I'm trying to think what form it is. It's um, yeah, I have it on the bookshelf, and I will get it out. Do you want me to try and scan it so that I could have a copy of it, so I could know because I've I've never seen what our current plan is. Well, it's not it's not really it's not very current, but I'll try and I'll scan it. <coughs> no. We need to, um, it would be, a that lease would be a starting point to sit down and start looking at properties. Okay. Well, this this thing that we just discussed with uh, Andrew here, uh, wouldn't that work right in with that? Because that'll be, that'll be part of that. Right, right. Yeah, I could do all the mapping for yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Yeah. All those, those layers in the Amherst map you sent are easily accessible and I can use the same well, things. Well, regional planning has like our aquifer map, our wetlands map. Right. So, yep, I use their data all the time. Oh, you do? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, they have, they have their data available too. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, Matt, if you want to um, set anything up now as far as another meeting or what you want to do. Okay. Um, would this require a special meeting or would this? Oh uh, yeah, this would be it. It'd be, it. I mean, maybe take a look at this chapter that I sent today and um, go from there. Okay. Let's see, you know, how to get started. Well, I, I'll, I'll get up the old plan and, and um, scan that to everyone. Okay. And, and who would we contact for this uh, $4,500 to get that ball rolling? That, well, may, you know, maybe we should have Jamie Carr or a representative from there from regional planning commission come in and say, say what that 4,500 would cover. Mm -hmm. Definitely need to know that. And we, we probably would have to put this in as like a Warren article for next year or. Um, well, we have education money about 4,000. We have um, land acquisition money, which we, you know, don't want to pay the electric bill with uh, right. college funds. Right. As Jason would say, but, but I I would think the town would be really interested in in this because, you know, we would know where our assets are and just what we have. Right, right. It's not in twelve files all over the place. Right, right. Like it is now. Right. Yeah. So do you want me to um see if I can get I can get, actually get Jay by WebEx for next meeting maybe? Yes, yes, that'd be great. I know <clears throat> Jay is also a wealth of knowledge. Yeah. He's from, who, Jay's from where? Nash, he's the executive director of National Regional Planning Commission. He's also our um, town planner at the moment. Does a fantastic job. Yes, he does. <clears throat> Okay. All right. Uh, next up, clean up Route Three A. Yeah, we had um, signed a two-year contract. I th uh, we had re-upped, so we're kind of we need at least four people to do that on a whatever day they decide. <clears throat> Are we dividing up the sections of Route Three A that we're going to do? I remember well, we, we do that. from Pinecrest to Hillcrest. Okay. Diane, thank you. All right. Um, so I don't know if you want to do a Saturday. Or it's now that it's a little bit lighter. Yeah. Um, it's kind of busy on Three A in the evenings, though. Okay. Not kind of. It is very busy. Last we year, Chief Sergeant followed us. Yeah, I heard yes. Yeah. So if we want that to do helps. that again, that's, it's it would... a bad curve when you go into um, Griffin. Mm -hmm. I agree. I've done that curve before. It is extremely dangerous. I've done it cleaning up with conservation and I've worked on it on the highway department. That is a very dangerous yeah. I, intersection. Somebody did it alone one time and that's not a good thing to do. We And we have signage as well that we can get right. um, to notify people. And I think it would they, be wise. Yeah, they did it. They moved the stuff for us and everything. They put a sign up. Well, the, the, the signage is great, but the last time we did it, it that was probably the best that I've ever seen. As well, we had because the I've police car it. following us. Yep. It was wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. So we, well, we can get that. that again if you want it again this yeah. year. Chief Stockton was more than willing to do that for us. Yeah. 
it was it was very reassuring. What day did you have in mind? Any particular? You think in uh, this month? Uh, yeah, probably before the the leaves come out too much and the brush it's gets in bad too, shape right now. It's long. a mess. Okay. Um, well, the spring first spring clean out of is always the yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. It's just I went and did some of it over by Normanton's and it's it's a, just a mess. What is uh? Well, there's no calendar in here now. Yeah. This this, well, the Saturdays are the third, ten, and seventeen, and twenty four. Okay. Let's uh, anyone feel anything about the seventeenth? I don't want to schedule it too close if people have plans. Um, sometime in the morning, probably before it gets too hot in the event that, uh, it is warmer. Um, first of all, are there four people available? Yes. 17th. I would be available. If you do it on a Saturday, I'm available. Yeah. And I'm also 17th? available. Me too. And Diane, so there's our four. Okay. Ten. What time? Does anyone have a preference? Uh, I'd say 10. No, 830. <laughs> Okay. Eight thirty. Eight thirty. Huh? The earlier, the better, because the traffic is like yeah. less just on that road. And youth sports will be starting up, so you want to get done. Yeah, before earlier. that. Yeah. What'd you say, Roger? We normally do it at about eight, eight or nine o'clock, right? Yeah, eight, eight, eight. Yeah. Eight thirty. Sounds good. Would you like me to post that as a public meeting? Yeah. What's that? Would you like me to post that as a public meeting? Sure. April 17th. And given oh. the current virus, is there some, is this something that we would invite the public to, or no, are we still going to avoid that? I, I wouldn't think that you would because. How long did it take us last year? The year before, couple, it took couple us hours. a little bit longer. A couple Co hours. A couple hours. And there were four of us last year my husband, myself, Roger, and Joan. The, I think we the have last two um, years. It's been bags. I'll check the cabin. I think we have bags, but will somebody else pick up the signs? Okay. I don't know if we need that many more than four mats. Okay. Yeah, we have this. Right, so uh, and meet at the um, old town hall. Yes. By the library. <clears throat> the parking lot. There. <laughs> and then we need a rain date, probably. <laughs> yeah. Good idea. Yeah. The following week, if it's a rain date. Yeah, we can check. How about we check? Uh, I mean, forecasts can be very yeah. unpredictable that far out, but if we, I'll check week the week prior and see what we're looking at for weather, and if it doesn't look good, we'll monitor it closely, and I'll reach out to see if uh, we need to reschedule. Okay, signs. Okay, good. Okay. Next up, map 15, lot 14-15, offer of sale. Okay, so this is the lot, and I don't think I got a price. I know I didn't get a price. Um, map 15, <clears throat> if you know where, where am I here? Let's see. Oh, okay. 15, 14, 15. Um, this is a 2.73 acre lot. I don't know how to describe it. If you know where Kevin Lynch lives, it's right behind Kevin Lynch. But if you don't, then. Oh, I see it. It's a building lot. Um, it's just north of the. Um, 14, 15? Yeah. 15, 15, 15. <laughs> The big White House here, she's offering it. She, she has a potential buyer, but she's always thought she would she always thought she would ask the conservation commission if they were interested. This is 14 51. The building lot. That's, my, what's this? That's the um, river access. Over here. River access. So we own this any so 13 acres. 16 How much does she ask? Um, I don't know. It's a building lot, so Hmm. This is behind Mary, uh, behind Kevin's house. Yep. Mm -hmm. Kevin's house is right here. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 This this one right here. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I like this is familiar. I know, right? <laughs> if you know where the, the river access. This is the river access piece. Mm -hmm. And that's the building. Like this. 
Interesting one. Yeah. <laughs> and, and oh, he's got it on the screen, too. Oh, oh there you go. I'm having a hard time finding it, Joan. I've got tax map 15. Map Wait, number six. If you see the blue line, the big wide blue line. There's 14, there's 15. Okay. Right. No. <laughs> Just go down to the bottom of the river. It's a really good tool for NFC. I know where it is. One. Yeah, I was going to say it's spectacular. I use it all this the time. This one. The building one. So it's this is uh, NRPC. This is the active no. map. I'm forgetting the exact it's name. Funny shape, is it like up there? 15. Check mark. Live map. 15 is over I think is what it's called. I believe it's called the What did I write down? From 14, NRPC. 15. You wrote map. And it's basically an attractive 14, tax map. 15. And on the screen right now, he has There's numerous filters 15, that you can 7. add. One to the map. Well, then there's so, another one. Wait, that's 15, that's so. item eleven. Item ten is fourteen yes, fifteen, which is that's oh. really that should stuff. be yeah. really cool. That's, is that the lot right behind Firefly? But we will be able. To. Oh yeah, to What's that? Yeah. Well, we will be able to. Oh yeah, two different things going on here. Yeah, sorry. We have item ten and item eleven. Okay, well, the item eleven is the one I just pointed out, which is fifteen seven one. Fifteen seven one. Okay. Across the street. Yeah. 15, 10, 14, 15. Yeah. 14, 15. He's on 15, 14. Oh, yeah. oh. yes. It's, it's two okay. different things I'm talking about. Yeah, that's the first one. So see the um the um hand piece I could all never point it out. <laughs> now I'm all confused. What lot are you guys looking at right now? Right. Or what <laughs> Hi, Jay. Jay. Yeah. Took over. <laughs> the one you've got is the correct one. That this one. one? That one. 14. Yeah. You did. Yep. So it's this piece <laughs> that's that was coming from. Was <laughs> was yeah, this piece I thought me and Russ was doing it, so I was clicking over that. I know. I'm like, huh, Russ? <laughs> this front piece is um, what they're offering. The back piece has restrictions on it from um, conservation open space. I lost. Yeah, that, there we are. That one they're offering for 125, and I think it's just the um, the front acreage here. The this part there, it was part of Firefly Drive, and the back part is in conservation easement. Now it's not buildable, right? That's not why he's buildable. They reserved the right to put a barn on it, but now he wants to sell it for a 125. That was the one he didn't have enough frontage, right, to commit off of Charles Bancroft. Right, but he would have, if he had, um, in a conservation open space design, he might have had the frontage. But I think he had started to go for a variance for the frontage. So they put the back wet part is in permanent um, restriction. But now he's, he wants to sell the front part. That's why. So where does it divide between the back part and the front part? Um, the middle. Did I bring the map? No, I didn't bring the map. I just... Pretty much, uh, just the front part is. There's 12 acres back here. It's pretty much right in here. Where's the trolley track? It's the white line, right? The white line toward the end. Yeah. So you can see the wet in here. So it's pretty much just that piece. So how many acres is it? Uh, he didn't give me an acre, just probably not much more than an acre. And it's not subdivided. No. And it can't be built on. Right. And it doesn't touch any of our other properties. Right. <clears throat> so you pretty much answered the question, didn't you? <laughs> so. They, they offer, they're offering that for, for sale. See, Firefly Way is built here. That part's in restrictive easement, and so it's just the front part that he's offering. So do we need to take a vote? Sure. Well, uh, chairman. I'll entertain a motion. Is the motion to buy or not to buy? <laughs> well, you're, no, you you're making make a motion. <laughs> I'm, I'm an alternate. Motion. I can't make a motion. Right, you, I, did I don't think you you It's not in the bylaws? I make a motion not to buy that piece. A little. I will second it. Yeah. I, Unanimous. Or uh, well, do I have a, any discussion? What's the motion? Not to not buy that. To buy, property. Not to buy that land. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
all those in favor of not purchasing not or not moving to purchase this property hi okay zero. it's that tricky language there we're moving in favor of not <laughs> of not doing it yeah. right um Okay. Now, the other piece is the 1571. That's the funny shape. Yeah. But that would connect right up to well, one it's of our things. Right. That connects right to... And I, didn't get a, I didn't get a price on that. Well, weren't we going to do an assessment, John? Didn't we talk about assessing that? Not that piece, no. We talked about the, so current, the bigger so piece. So the thing that looks like a check mark is... Is the whole lot, yeah. That's two point yes, seven three acres. Okay. And there's that's a wet. house in front of it. Oh, in yeah. front of it. Yeah. That's yep. Kevin Lynch's house. And so the access comes off of the access comes off right over here. It would have to come through. It's a, it's a building lot. Mm -hmm. And so Kevin Lynch's house is up front here. The new house when they throw it across the street. Mm -hmm. I make a motion we have that assessed because it touches our other property. It's buildable. And what do you mean assessed? What do you mean? Find out how much it's worth before oh. we make an offer. Or find out how much the person wants. How much the person wants, how much it's worth. You need to know both pieces, right? What? What was that? You need to know both pieces, right? No, it's one piece. What do you mean? No, no, you need to know how much it's worth and how much. Oh. How much it's worth and how much she wants. Yeah. yeah. Would have a motion. I make a motion that we look into that piece. And uh, Joan, you did appoint Diane as an no, alternate. no, okay. oh, so no. I'm I didn't. As an alternate, she can make a motion because it's not in the bylaws. She can't because all she's doing is asking for discussion. Okay. By making a motion. Okay. Okay. All right. You now, when it comes down to the voting, she can't vote, but she's able to participate in the whole meeting. Okay. Thanks. Very well. Your motion. Mm -hmm. We make a motion to look into it. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? All right. All now those. Are in we just going to look in to see what it costs or what? We can't buy any land without getting an assessment to bring in front right. of the select. Yeah. Can't get an, right you can't buy it without getting an appraisal. An appraisal. That's what I meant. I'm sorry. Not an assessment. An appraisal. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to. All right. Well, you have a motion. What's the motion? <laughs> the motion was to ex um, move to explore forward. how much. Yeah. The, the value of the land and, and how much she wants for it. Okay. Right. But, 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 well, I have discussed in the first second. So are we asking, we're asking how much she wants for it and are we asking for, to do an appraisal or are we just looking to see what, the, when you say the value, are you just want to look up the assessment card or I don't want to spend money on an appraisal. Yeah. Appraisals can be pricey. I, I think we, first we need to find out what she wants for it. Okay. Okay. And go from there. Okay. 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 Uh, we have a motion, and I believe a second on the floor. What's? Well, are we amending the motion? We need, we, yep. we need to amend it. Yeah. I'm sorry. I thought we needed both to go there. Well, yeah. I think you'd want to know how much she wants first, because if she comes in and says I want a half a million dollars, we may say it's not worth it. So therefore, we don't want to go do it. Right. But if I... she gives a number we think is kind of good, there may be worth spending money to go have an assessment. Right. Then. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So, was there an, a motion on the floor? I believe it was uh, Diane made a motion, and then Harry, I believe you seconded. No, I, no. I don't think anybody seconded. Okay. Okay. So, what's the motion? Just, just to see how much you want. I'd like so. to amend my motion so that we ask Matt, the owner of the property, how much she wants for it. Okay. Anyone? Do we have a second? I will second. Okay, we have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Of the motion as amended. Of the mo yes. Thank you. All right. Those opposed? Those abstaining? Seven zero zero. Who is going to contact the owner? Dan, would you like to? Sure. Okay. Can I see? Okay, water withdrawal for commercial use. Okay, um, 
In Londonderry, I sent you this picture, I believe. Um, a Kendall Pond in Londonderry. They have notice water withdrawal pro prohibited. And then they have the ordinance, the ordinance spelled out, which I have here somewhere. <laughs> number, what number is this? <clears throat> number 12. Did I send you the um, ordinance? That London Dairy has? Nope. I don't recall. I sent the pics. This isn't the drought stuff, right? What? This, this isn't the drought, right? No, this is number 12. <clears throat> this is for a commercial. This is the picture. And I'm thinking um, a Hillcrest and Pinecrest, there is a. Um, Swamp, or it's head, actually the headwater is a brick, brickyard brook. And I frequently, over the years, see landscaping trucks there with drawing water. They tell me that they are not washing their pipes out, the um, seeding pipes out. But I'm concerned with the um, drought situation. About the, uh, water, the water, <clears throat> what I'm talking about, this was over Kendall Pond, off Kendall Pond Road. Oh, okay. okay. What I'm talking about is where Hillcrest and uh, Pinecrest meet. So this is that wetland that's kind of on the boundary right. with London right. Dairy, with the it's, town It's line. actually the headwaters of um, Brickyard, Nesson Creek Brook. Brickyard Brook. This thing's driving me crazy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and this would so be... this would have this is um, just what I'm thinking. To can we take this to the board of selectmen and see if they're interested in doing this? I mean, we can't do this ourselves, but this is an idea. So we're looking to approach sucking water out of the uh, the hydro seating people, right? Yeah, those are the ones. those people are yeah. Like at the end of Cranberry Lane would be another place. Um, Hillcrest and Pinecrest is, I often see them there. And any of the other. Um, By Tim's turf. Is, is where the house yeah, is. Colby Brook. Yep. Isn't there already a standing uh, rule? I'm not sure if this is directly pairs up with commercial use of pulling the water, but it, the DES, I believe there's a regulation regarding drawing water. Oh, only if you take a, a large amount of water, like for a golf course. Or okay, something. All right. Um, so basically, we're pursuing. We're looking to. I'm. I'm seeing if the commission is interested in pursuing this to take it to the board of selectmen. Because, as an ordinance, this would need to be decided by the selectmen. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, the past few years, we've had some pretty strong droughts, and uh, further pumping water out of water bodies could worsen the issue. This has always been an ongoing problem. Sometimes they even hook up to the hydrants and they steal water from the hydrants, mm. which causes quite a commotion with dirty water. Mm. With what water? With, with dirty water. Because what they do is they, they want to get in there and get out of there as quick as they can. They open that hydrant wide open, fill their trucks up, and then they leave. Mm. So currently, there's no prohibition on how much they can take or anything. There's no right, not yeah, right. So they just, you know, they find these places close to the road. They pull a truck up and just take the water out. Which th that particular place, Hillcrest and Pinecrest, is since we've had been in a drought situation, is you know, I think it's pretty critical if you're just taking more water out of there. So it sounds reasonable to me. Um, any anyone else have any input on this? Is the waterways, the waterways technically belong to everybody, right? The water is the property of the state. Yeah, which we own. We are the state. We are the state, but the right, the state regulates. The state owns, like, like right. where the fishing derby park is. The mm -hmm. the water is the 
property of the state, even though the surrounding land is owned by someone. So if the state owns the water, how do we put an ordinance in to keep them from pumping out of there? We'd have because I think that they, um, I, I think they <laughs> put, you know, adjacent the land, land adjacent to the water. Yep. So they're saying they own the land adjacent to the, the Well, water. I don't know. They must have did some legal work on this in order mm -hmm. to, you know, put this together. Yeah. 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 So, you know, it must be a real thing. I mean, I've seen them actually suck the water out of the place at the end of is that Roberts, where they get it just down to just about dry from sucking the water out of there. Shouldn't they have water access where they're? I don't know. What, what, what do you think, Steve, on this? I know there's a lot of communities that do adopt it, so it would be worth investigating. Can you, would you be willing to bring it up to the Board of Selectmen? Without a doubt. Thank I know a lot of towns put them in for non-residential, is how they work. Right, right. Yeah. Right. And I think it would be also wise to look into, uh, you know, Coming informed to this, so we can actually explain what the impacts are, and we can show those, so that we have a more solid case. Uh, should there be? Well, first he needs to bring it to the board of select and see if they're even interested in going sure. further with mm -hmm. it. And then, the, yeah, I agree. But yeah, for discussion with the selectmen, and if it does uh, go, I believe there would need to be at least one public hearing on it. Um, Roast, definitely. Yeah, then we uh, we'd like to be able to do our homework and discussing that but i think it's a I good think, idea i think that this one is it seems that it's where they own the property next to the water then then you can can regulate it mm -hmm. but probably talk to london down and see what how they how they did it <clears throat> okay okay uh, next up Members to attend select meeting for clarification regarding trails signage on any town land. Yeah. Okay, that? I'll explain. So I have a memo from Troy <laughs> to myself that says, um, town property, effective immediately, the Conservation Commission shall seek permission from the Board of Selectmen, Recreation Commission, or other public property owners slash managers before posting signage, closing or redirecting trails, constructing trails, or issuing any rules or regulations. I understand that this practice has been acceptable in the past, but with increased demand and use of all town properties, communication is critical for the best interest of all. So when I talked to Troy, he, he felt that it was not meaning conservation land that the Conservation Commission has bought. But I don't read that in this. This says effective immediately everything. So Matt and I wanted to go to the Board of Selectmen and see what their feeling is, get it straightened out. Correct? Okay. So we were only talking about land that rec or town owns. Conservation land is under the jurisdiction of conservation. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's under the direction of this commission. So we were just stating that if it's recreational land, if it's state land, if it's town land, we would like people to come to us prior to going out there, closing trails, cutting anything, putting up signage. Okay. Okay. Because that's what we wanted to get cleared yeah. up because it says. So, and that doesn't sound unreasonable. <laughs> would um, you like me to have uh, a clarifying email sent to you guys? Please. Right. Sure. <coughs> so do you think we need to go to the selectman or not? Then? So this is. Um, the clarifying email. So this would, is regarding any. This is excluding conservation land, so we are correct. Okay, um, I think that was uh, the matter of confusion. Yeah, I get, think that yeah. that's cleared up. I don't think it's. Uh, I I don't think it's necessary anymore. Okay, okay. I'll have one sent tomorrow. I think that's. Uh, I think that's clear. Thank you. Yep. All right. Uh, next, approve March fourth, twenty twenty one minutes. <clears throat> okay. Anybody who didn't bring their reading glasses, I'm all set here. <laughs> Wow. 
Good boy. Wow. <laughs> I didn't, you know, didn't press reset on the printer. <laughs> Thank you. Ian Julius, the secretary, do you think you can arrange to get the minutes put on the town page just like everybody else is on? All the other boards' minutes are accessible. Oh, yeah. Well, I know they're not. Okay. Yeah. We don't go on the town website until they're approved, and I put them in a file. Have to put them in a separate file so John can help pick them up. So until they're approved, then they get yeah, put I on. Yeah, I wouldn't put them out there until they're approved. Looks like the Dead Sea Squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> Need reading glasses there. <laughs> wow, almost another tree John. fell. I almost said I already read it. Oh, anyway. I found it. Good lord. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing is it should say March 4th up here. Oh, yes. Oh, my. Yeah, I got it. Give everybody a minute to. Uh, okay. So, in regard to that, again, though, so that would. That would start to happen now, though, because it's not available it, now. It, it has been happening. I put them in there, and I if he doesn't pick them up. What can I do? Um, so that would be Andrew's. Andrew could talk to John and yeah, he have that. to have a his own file there and uh, pick them up from Andrew's, right? That way, if people aren't at the meeting, they can access the minutes. And then I wouldn't if you put want to go back and look. You can go back and research things that were happening. Right now, we can't. I think you can watch it too on YouTube. Yeah, you can always watch it. Yeah, but, you could yeah. watch it, but I don't know that I really want to spend an hour to to look for one thing that I could find for minutes. Um, don't put approved on it until after they're approved, so in case they don't get approved that night. Something. I found one missing. Oh, 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 in the on the second. I think back, I have. Don't I have it highlighted across when I send them to you, or no? Uh, it doesn't come through that way. Okay. I'll make sure to take that off. Okay, can I can I mention some corrections? Sure. Okay, so we the, the um person's name which doesn't need to go in here because we didn't have it that night, but it's um D O U G under um Morris Falls help from Chris D O U G H A T Y. But that would be for this minute so because we didn't know his name then. I didn't I didn't have it. Did we have contact information for him? I, I've been I have to an email. So okay. I have. Um, on 709 Conservation Commission, uh, there was a, a list of um, uh, things that need to be done. So. Should I send Andrew the list and then go in this this minutes, March minute, uh, what April minutes? We had yes. we yeah they were there. You sent them to us all. Yeah, but he can just add it, can he? Because he did see it. Yeah, because they but they weren't all. Um, I don't think go the minutes from your ride with Mike, right? Right. Yeah, that, they can all go in here because we did have it that night. They had the list. So attach your minutes to... Or attach... Did you have that list from February 13th? I'm not sure. All right, I, I can send it. I'll forward it to you. Okay. There was a couple of things that weren't like Aldrich Drive. That was just... We were just looking at that. Okay. And um, now the end of the, the last line... Um, where it says the very last line on three acres should be 39 acres. Yeah, big difference.
actually have a question about the minutes. Sure. Yeah. So uh, this, these, these are actually March 4th minutes, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if it was March 4th, I actually was uh, present. It says on that. Oh, oh yeah, Marion was present also. So sorry. No, it's okay. You were here in spirit, maybe. <laughs> right, you were here. March 4th, you were here. Yeah. Yeah, because you're sitting next to me. Yeah, Michael was the only one absent. Hmm. I don't know how I missed that. Cut and paste. <laughs> it's easy no, to I do. write everybody's name in the very oh. beginning of the meeting, so. It's okay. It happens. <laughs> we don't do a, um, what do you call it, though? A roll call? It gets confusing. Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept these as amended. I'll second it. All right. Any other discussion? Any other corrections? Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, hold on a sec. One more time. Everyone raise your hands. You're in favor. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Uh, opposed? Abstain? Six, zero, one. <clears throat> All right. And that brings us to rainfall report. Roger. Well, pretty dry month. Uh, I only recorded 2.39 inches of rain for the whole month. Normal average rainfall for this month, uh, for the month of March, is 5.7 inches. So we are pretty dry. Yeah, I believe I saw information from both the state and uh, NOAA that said we are already into a drought. Mm. We're already in a mild drought. Um, the ticks don't know it, though. Because the ticks are out in for yeah. they That's they're out very going. early, earlier than people yeah, would think. I have usually a, in drought they aren't, but I got it's enough to get them picking. I got a tick bite last year in March, so yeah. it's, they're they're out as soon as it's above freezing. They're out. Yeah, they're yeah. very yeah. active. So I put the medicine on my dog. Oh, you blood. I just bought the. Food. I had Lyme disease for the third time last year. Really? Wow. Do they treat you for it, or do you? I mean, do you take any antibiotics for it? What do you get? 21 days of the roughest antibiotics you have to take. Mm -hmm. Really? That boy, does it wreck your stomach. I remember the pills being huge. I had to take antibiotics for it, and I believe that's uh, if you can have it addressed immediately. Mm -hmm. um, that's what they give you. So because of a bite, or, or did they give you a blood test? Well, you, can you tell I think I might have Lyme disease? <laughs> <laughs> well, did you get that target? Thing around where you got bit. No, I don't. That isn't uh one hundred percent common. Right, That's not like that. a, a common symptom necessarily for Lyme disease. Um, but you can get achy feeling, fevers, you name it. But it's 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 a long range disease. Yeah. Okay. Well, All right. Uh, we've That's already right. appointed officers for this year. Um, no, so that will bring us to any other business. Yeah. Anybody have anything else to add? May, may I make a suggestion? Sure. In, now that you are chairman, would you please move over there? Because <laughs> sure. it, it's rather difficult. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just I just want to keep distant for everybody. Um, you can kind of this. You can we can yeah. surround you in plexiglass. <laughs> sorry. I move we adjourn. Oh. I, I was wondering if I could uh, add uh, just for other business. I took a walk out to the uh, Bixby Meadow, and in case anybody hasn't been out there lately, it's there's tons of life out there that I've seen. There's lots of geese, ducks. I saw turtles basking on the uh, on the uh, on stumps out there, and I, I saw, saw a beaver. Put a out that? there. Oh, you did see a merganser. I saw one as well. It's uh, this is the off of the Lonely Fort Trail. This is where it ends. This is. Oh, I haven't taken. I'll take this is uh, off of the bike path across from Blackbird Lane. Uh, you can park at Cranberry. There's a little parking area there. You walk up the bike path and right in. Okay. I got to check it out. I, I stopped at um, Chase Brook um, where the fishing derby used to be to check out ducks today. And three ducks were fighting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> fighting? Rest fighting. I we, thought they were going to drown the female. <laughs> We have duck boxes to put out, and I did pull a destroyed one from Bixby Meadow. Um, I think it would be, I think it's, uh, we should try to put those out 
What are they for? Point this year? Uh, for ducks. With ducks, ducks to live in. and mergansers. Yeah. Boxes so that they can have their eggs and stuff? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just didn't know what they were for. Yeah. It's like a bit, it looks like a big bird box and you situate them approximately three or four feet off the ground, off of the edge of a wetland. Um, but yeah, that's what I wanted to bring up. Uh, I have one, a couple, yeah. one other thing oh, too. Okay. Uh, Joan, go ahead. Um, the ZBA is meeting April 14th. Um, to talk about the aquifer district of uh, the variance for 18 units of, well, they need a variance for a permitted use uh, for across the street from males in the sand pit, 18 units of multifamily housing, and that's aquifer district also. They're going for a variance for the aquifer district. So if you have any input on that, it's April 14th. Okay. Jack? Well, I just got something real quick. Uh, well, it's this spring is basically here, and also because uh, pre-spawning fishing for bass and everything is also you know, here, basically. I was just wondering, what is the official process for like making a fish like a record fish like for instance like how would one certify like i heard like in massachusetts the fish actually has to be dead and you have to bring it to a fishery biologist i just didn't know like what's the process in the game i had some people asking that well the process would be double check the fishing game that's what you want to give them a call um, because i believe if you do catch it i'm not sure whether you need to bring it to a checking station and they've changed the rules somewhat but if you could give conquer a call specifically in that time they'll, they'll have the correct answer for you Perfect. yeah i will appreciate that yeah some people are asking i didn't know the answer so. yeah. well and if they tell you where they caught it i want to know <laughs> <laughs> Inside information. <laughs> okay. Um, if nobody else has any new business, uh, I will accept a motion to go into non public RSA 91 A colon 3 section D. Um, hang on a second. I'm just thinking if we need to do that or not. Uh, sure. Why don't we? Okay. Um, Andrew, you need this form. So do you already have it? Oh, I brought that form too. Yeah, it for me. Do you have it? No, do you? I, yeah. Okay. Did I make a motion? <laughs> well, I, I just phrased that. Said it was it? I just. Oh, you okay? So need a second. Yep. So you, I'll second it. Okay. Uh, can we do a roll call? Yeah, you have yeah. to do a roll call. Oh, that, who motioned? Uh, Steve, did. Mr. Weber did, and Marion has got. I used to do a roll call vote. What's that? You just have to do a roll call vote. Now. Okay. All right. So I guess I will. I'm forgetting how we do those. Just I'm in favor of going into non-public. I'm in favor. This, do we have to name we ourselves have to go, individually? Yeah. Yep, that's All right. Person. All right. Matt Lepore, chair, I in favor of going into non-public. Yes. Do I say it? No. no give up. Joan, yes. Marion, yes. Harry, yes. Roger, yes. Andrew, yes. Okay. You're now in non-public. Thank yes. you, everyone, yes. for tuning in. Have a good night. Thank you, Russ.